Hi, everybody. I'm laughing, and I'll explain why in a second here. So, um, yeah, doing this trip in a week and a half, and I wanted to do a bunch of videos talking about the gear that I'm going to be using, the, um, the bike and all that, um, and just haven't had time, but I'm on a ride right now, and I was sheltering. You can barely see it in the background over there. Uh, pretty bad storm rolled through, so I was sheltering back over, over here. And I figured this is as good a time as any to actually pull out the camera, let's do a video, let's talk about the bike itself. And the reason why the storm's way over there is because, uh, once again, I got stopped by somebody who saw the bike and said, where are you going? That's the big question. Everybody always says, where are you going? Well, yeah, but anyway, so let's talk about the bike here. Um, future videos, we'll talk about all the other stuff, but we're just going to concentrate on the bike itself this time. This is a Salsa Marrakesh. It is a steel-framed touring bike. And I chose this one because it was the most bang for the buck. It uh, comes with some pretty good components. It comes with, you can barely see it there, but it does come with a back rack. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh, and uh, spokes. I should show you that. It has spare spokes right on the frame. So this was the best bang for the buck as far as I was concerned. As far as, you can get, you can spend a lot more money and get really good bikes. But um, this was the best that I could do for the, for the money spent. Um, a couple modifications made to it. Because it's not really your bike until you make modifications to it. Um, instead of, the, this came with a flat bar. I took that off. Um, it was causing a lot of pain in the hands, causing a lot of pain up the arm. So I'm using a Jones H bar. Which, biggest defining feature this solid ring uh, right here, which gives you a lot of really nice hand positions as you're riding. Uh, I tend to do what I call chicken wing arrow, which you really, well, just take my word for it. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been using this for the past couple weeks. I like it a lot, obviously, or else I wouldn't have it on there right now. So this is kind of where uh, where that one's going. Also, the seat itself, um, it came with a Brooks saddle, and there are people who swear by them. I was swearing at them. So I altered, I changed it out for a Rido, Rido. I don't know how you pronounce that, but uh, if you're really interested, there's a website. Uh, I like this one. It's nice and soft, and it gives you a little bit of loft here on your sit bones so that you don't, um, is there a sensitive way to put this? You don't crush yourself. We'll just settle it with that. Uh, let's talk about the, let's, let's kind of go from uh, bottom to ground here, uh, whatever. Uh, the wheels. I'm using uh, Velocity wheels. These are Atlas wheels. Uh, this is more of the touring style. And these are the heavy duty, the, well, it's overkill. That's what I was told. Uh, 36 spokes in the front, 40 spokes in the back. And yeah, people have said that's way too much, and I'm like, good. I would rather have it than not. Also, oh yeah, figures the tires upside down. So I'm using Schwalbe tires. These are the Marathons, Marathon Plus. There's the tread. I realize I'm probably making people seasick by how much I'm moving the camera. Uh, I have the uh, Marathon, the other Marathons, and that's one step down from these. And those have been really good. The reason I like them is they are they're very very robust, just like the Velocity rims. Actually, the, the reason I'm going with all these things, uh, this actually has puncture protection on uh, on the inside of the rubber. There, there's no such thing as puncture proof. There's puncture resistance, and these are uh, about as resistant as you can possibly get. And the rims, yeah, they're they they support me. I've had uh, ailerons, uh, Velocity ailerons on my main bike. And yeah, that's that was kind of like yeah, I'm gonna be going with them again. Okay, let's start talking about uh, oh yeah racks, since that's kind of a big thing. I'm using an Arkel front rack. I don't know the model name of this one offhand, but it's the one that has the little A-frame over the top. It adds stability. I found, um, especially when you got the front bags on there. I don't have them on today, so it, it adds a lot of stability on there for uh, a lot of weight on the front, which I liked. Um, makes it a lot easier. Fenders. I'm using Soma Rain Dog Fenders. And if I bring you around the back here, lift the safety triangle, you can kind of see what's left of the uh, of the logo. It gets rubbed off. Um, aluminum fenders, and honestly, I chose them because they were green. Hey, at least I'm going to be honest with you folks. Uh, let's see. These down here. These are Blackburn Cages. 
Uh, these are meant for, normally they, they're on the fork, but because this frame is so huge, I actually put them in the frame itself. And I'm using the hold, you see one Nalgene bottle, there's going to be a second one there, and I apologize for the as you can see thing, because I hate when people do that, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, old habits. Uh, so I can hold two liters of water in the frame itself. Um, there's other ways to do it, this is the way I'm choosing to do it. And I have a third front, third one down here that I could have used, but I'm using that to hold a full-sized air pump. Because uh, those mini pumps suck. They, they do really well, they just suck to use. <sighs> Alright. Oh, kickstand. Um, you know, I should know the name of the kickstand off the top of my head, but I also got this one from Soma. So, uh, yeah, it's a motorcycle-style kickstand. And because kickstands, when your bike weighs over 75, 85, 95 pounds, you want a kickstand. Just trust me on this. Using uh, Shimano, uh, Shimano pedals, half flat, half clipless. Uh, I really kind of fallen in love with the clipless thing. It's just so much easier to climb hills with. Yeah, I, so, I mean, it, it's a thing. You like it or you don't. So, there you are. Okay, the bags. Uh, we'll talk about the solar panel on a different video, but the bags themselves, using Arkel bags, again, I don't know the model numbers, but they, this is not the largest bag that they make. Uh, I'm using like about a size down from that. Main reason for that is I know me, and if I have a humongous amount of space, I will fill it. So we're going to not fill that. Uh, as it is, I'm already filling these bags, knowing full well that I'm overpacking. So, uh, yeah, the front bags are very similar to this, and like I said, we'll go over the, the contents in another video. Safety triangle, because safety triangles are good, uh, especially when you're doing a lot of open road riding, which I'm going to be. Uh, let's see, using another set of bags. There's one bag that's not on here that I'm saving for when I need it. But this is a dill pickle, um, this, this is their, their seat bag, and I'm using this to hold all of the tools. Well, most of the tools, anyway. These are the uh, repair tools that I need to get to quickly. Uh, the other bag is a Ran and Deer bag that sits on the other side of this, but I don't need it, so it's actually packed away in here. And also, you can see one of the lights. Um, I kind of moved it up so you can see the brand name. Uh, light and Motion, they make a very, very, very powerful light. Um, and that's what this is. Uh, blinding Warning. This is in, uh, excuse me, that's in full daylight. And it doesn't, the, the camera's causing it to blink. It doesn't actually blink. Well, the, the main light blinks, I should say, but the, the yellow, and you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Lights are good. Uh, let's go to the, uh, the, the main body here. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and instead of uh, carrying the tent in the panniers, I'm actually carrying it right here. This is a Wanderlust bag, a nice roll bag. I'm kind of borrowing this from bike packing because it just made more sense with a flat bar style. So I'm gonna be carrying the tent basically right up front here. I chose this one because of the companion piece, the companion bag that goes with it. Um, another Wanderlust bag, but it has these pockets on the sides and a pretty roomy main pocket in here. Uh, I have yet to fill this to capacity. I just really don't have a need to. Uh, you're gonna to have to carry a map with you, so this is how I'm carrying my map. This is uh, Jand, it's a, um, plastic kind of thing. I, yeah, okay, you could use like a garbage bag or whatever, but uh, this is just more classy. And it Velcros right to here. Right next to the Light and Motion. Well, I think this is the uh, the Urban 1000. Yeah, Urban 1000. It is bright. Um, yeah, I've had people accuse me of being a moped before on this thing. And of course, I've got a shark. <laughs> because you gotta have a shark. That's just not, you know, you gotta have one. We got uh, a couple other bags to kind of go over here. Uh, these are from Rockgeist. All the rest of the stuff is from Rockgeist. Uh, this is something you see a lot more in the uh, in the bike packing. The people who do a lot of more of the wood stuff. Uh, they call these feed bags. I think Rockgeist calls theirs um, like a honey pot. I don't know, but I'm using it to hold bottles. I usually put the camera that I'm holding right in here. There's a couple of other different styles. I chose this one because of the rigidity of the uh, of the of the system so it holds its form really nicely and you can uh, put, hike your trash out very handy 
uh, gas can style bag. Again, I don't know what they actually call these things. So if you go to their websites, you'll find all sorts of stuff. But this holds a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, don't even have anything in there. A lot of you might be saying, what's with the USB cord? We'll cover that in a future video. When you get to the electronics, we'll cover that. And the final bag is a half frame bag, also from Rockgeist. Um, this one is uh, how I'm carrying... Maybe I should just stick to the other side and show you. This is stuff that's really long and really cumber cumbersome to just carry around. So I've got the tent poles up here, along with the stakes. I've got a tripod and a falling camera. Um, the toolkit of stuff that I don't normally need to get to, like chain lube and things like that. And I got one battery in there, but we'll, again, we'll cover this when we get to the uh, when we get to the electronics video. Can I close this one-handed? Ah, I'm trying to close this one-handed, and it's not going. There it goes. And the Rockgeist half frame bag, I chose this one for a lot of reasons, mainly the electronics that we'll cover in the future video, but also because it uh, it works really nicely. And the guy, the guy who do, who does these, uh, he basically he just said, yeah, send me um, send me an outline of your frame, and I did, and he knocked this out very quickly, and did a bang up job of it too. That did a lot of. I was afraid it was going to be like too tight or too loose. It's perfect, and it uh, holds a lot of stuff in there. All right, that's a really really quick overview of that bike and I'm just looking at the time that I've taken talking about a quick overview of what's the bike. Yeah, that's way longer than I expected to talk to you guys about. So um, this is also the reason why I'm breaking this up into several videos because we can do one long video. It'll be hard on both of us. So let's not let's not do that. So that's the, that's the bike that I'm going to be riding from Seattle back to uh, back to Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little freaked out about it myself. So, uh, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and you'll see a lot more of it uh, coming up as far as what else I'm packing, as far as what's in the bags. We'll cover that later. Um, also, I'm going to make this rec I'm going to also ask you guys this at the end of this particular video as well. Underneath this link, you'll find a, uh, a link to the River Otter Cycling Club track page. So, if you want to track me, that's, we're going to cover that under the electronics, but you'll be able to do so. But also, you'll be able to donate to the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. This entire ride is being done as a fundraiser for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. So, if you like this video, what I'm asking you to do is donate to PanCan. Please do that. Um, there's lots of reasons for it. But mainly because we got to find something. we got to find a cure or something. But anyway, um... Yeah, we'll cover those and we'll cover all the other stuff in future videos. Let's see if I can turn this off one-handed. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. So, see ya. Beep.